hello, Ryan here with another episode of Try Try My Darling, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the, uh, I guess, controversial uh, Double Dragon 4 uh, on the Nintendo Switch. So, this is a game that was released as kind of a celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Double Dragon series. And it originally came out on uh, uh, PC and PS4. And um, and then a few months ago, it came out on the Nintendo Switch. Um, this is actually going to be my first time playing the game. Um, I have not uh, ever played it. So um, we will see how this goes. I already like the music. Um, I would say I have pretty, um, I guess, low expectations, to be honest, going into it. Um, I've read a lot of, um, you know, when the PS4 version originally came out, um, I was really excited because, you know, it was a new Double Dragon game in the 8-bit style, kind of modeled after Double Dragon 2 on the NES, which is my favorite game in the series. Um, hmm. But, uh... Oh, let's see. Retro, I like that. Um... But then, you know, it apparently had technical problems, like screen tearing and stuff, on um, PS4. So we will see what we're getting here. But, you know, this was developed by Arc System Works. It um, included some original members of the development team um, from the 8-bit days. <laughs> Perfect music. Um, and, I mean, it is only seven bucks, um, on the eShop, literally six ninety nine. so, um, okay, little cutscene there. Wow, it actually uses four buttons, instead of a back attack. Punch, kick, and there's a jump button. There's a Linda.
those knees, uh, those jumping knees are pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Captivating story. <laughs> yeah, um, so far I'm pretty okay with this game, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I was ex definitely expecting more of a, more of a hot mess. Um, this is, this is fine. Um, <laughs> this is, I guess, kind of what I wanted the game to be. Um, I mean, maybe it's not, like, super ambitious or anything, but it feels pretty solid. It feels like, uh, like an 8-bit Double Dragon game. Um, not noticing any of the screen tearing I had read about. Um, I mean, maybe that was fixed for the Switch version? <laughs> I didn't realize that was a a drop off there. So thought it would have just taken me down a level. in a bobo. Yeah, it looks like it mixes in enemies from the first two NES Double Dragon games. Um, not sure if we, uh, for getting any Double Dragon 3. Um, to be honest, I'm not super familiar with that game because I played it when I was younger and I did not like it because it was really, really hard. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, so I guess um, I should say the whole reason I'm playing this right now, if I haven't mentioned it already, is uh, because there was uh, recently a post about the, the game on Hardcore Gaming 101, and it was, um, you know, it was still pretty critical of the game, but it was, uh, I think, more... Um, uh, I guess less critical than the initial reviews. Um, so I decided to actually give it a shot and, you know, I'm, what, three missions in now? And, I mean, I will admit the game is repetitive as, uh, brawlers tend to be, but I'm definitely not hating it. Uh, I'm, I think this is pretty cool, actually, <laughs> to be able to be playing a classic 
uh, style, a new classic style than a uh, double dragon game. 2018, I think that's cool. that you can pick up giant things in this game. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Ah! What? In a bobo? <laughs> that was amazing. Those knees are devastating. <laughs> Beginning a double dragon one. That's crazy. Oh, nice. And the music and everything. And I think this game is cool. I like this game. <laughs> it's making me very happy right now. is so good. So you can continue right on the spot. I like that. Not having to start the whole level over. Even though I wasn't like super far in. It's still nice. Hmm. 
<laughs> These bobos are wailing on me. Either I'm like suddenly getting like way worse at the game, or the difficulty like really just picked up here. Throwing a lot of enemies now. better strategy for attacking, I think. The, the hurricane kicks aren't really cutting it anymore. <laughs> so that's how Japan is controlled. Yeah, not, uh, not much to say right now, um, I guess, you know what, I actually, I feel like I've already talked a ton about Double Dragon, um, on, I recorded a video of a playthrough of Double Dragon 2 on the, um, uh, Famicom Classic, so I talked a bunch about the Double Dragon <laughs> series there. Um, so if you want more Double Dragon, uh, I guess check that out. Um, in the meantime, I'm just uh, just kind of kicking it in Double Dragon 4 here. Which uh, is starting to ramp up.
spikes and some uh, jutting things. Always a good time. Whoa! Some conveyor belts into pits. Yeah, I've always felt like the um, platforming was sort of the weakest element of games in this series. Oh no, the green abobo! The Hulk abobo. Yikes. One thing I have never experienced in the world of Double Dragon is I've never seen the movie. I imagine it is not great, but I'm curious. Um, I think there was a cartoon as well. Also, I've never seen that, which is probably fine. Fight as a Bobo. That's great news. <laughs> wow. The plot thickens. Hey, new enemies. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, I'm not loving, like, the way that you just sort of get swarmed in these, uh, I guess starting from level 5 and on. Um, I sort of like the balance of just a couple enemies at a time that was in the, the first few stages. Um, the getting swarmed is a little annoying, but that's also just kind of how brawlers go, I guess. get uh, deeper in, the more challenging they get. I guess it's kind of the, the quarter muncher roots. It is nice you have that new knee attack for when you're getting up from getting knocked down. Um, that makes it, that evens the odds a little bit, but it's still kind of ridiculous how many enemies attack you at once in this game. I will say platforming is a little easier in this game because you have a dedicated jump button and it's not trying to hit two buttons at once to jump. Um, it 
it's still very, um, I guess, like, ghouls and ghosts-esque in that, uh, when you, when you are jumping, you can't really change your, um, angle or momentum, so you're kind of stuck in the jump that you're in, unless, I guess, unless you do one of the hurricane kicks. And then that will just drop you straight down. I believe I read in the Hardcore Gaming 101 article that um, there are 12 missions in the game, so I'm getting uh, closer to the end. Not sure if I'm going to be able to finish the game, though, um, with only two credits left. We'll see what happens. I gotta say, I am a I am a fan of the Switch getting all of these sort of retro reimaginings of games, um, like we got with Blaster Master Zero and this. And, you know, we're going to soon get um, all those Mega Man games. So. Uh, Mega Man 9 and 10, like, just having all that kind of stuff on the Switch is pretty awesome. In addition to all the arcade archives and psycho shooters, um, it's really becoming a great platform for classic games, even without a virtual console, which is, uh, it's pretty impressive that they've managed to, uh, build up a library of Retro games. Okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever was just happening there was very dumb. <laughs> that was way too many iron spike ball boomerangs. Not a fan. Ah! Goodness. Ah! Well, that's mean. Oh, oh my god. That is some real uh, jerk platforming there. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> okay. It's a very yellow abobo. Wow. 
Oh. <laughs> Bye, Bobo. Oh. One of the Okada sisters. Who run Japan. In with the swarms. One life to live, <laughs> and zero credits. Oh, that looks awesome. I like it. Like a like a hostess bar or something, and there's a sumo wrestler. See, this game is very good. Maybe not very good, but it's good. I don't I don't get the hate. I don't get the hate at all. Game over. Well, that was fun. Um, let's see. What would happen if? It just makes you start back at the beginning, I guess? Um... <laughs> For some reason, I thought you could... ...continue... ...from... I thought I saw that in the uh, Hardcore Gaming article, they said you could continue from where you left off, the stage you left off at, but I guess not? Like it starts you at the beginning. Well, that's uh. Okay. I guess that is um, that for Double Dragon 4. Um, I don't know. I think it's a pretty. pretty cool game. Pretty alright. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, yeah. It kind of. Uh, you kind of get what you get with it. Um, it's $6.99 on the eShop, um, can't be super mad about that price, and, uh, I don't know, if you're, if you're a fan of the 8-bit Double Dragon games, um, and you have a Switch, I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't grab this for 7 bucks. um, 
just uh, just kind of know what you're getting into, which is a pretty bare bones um, sort of homage to these original games, um, but not not necessarily a bad thing. So, anyways, I guess that wraps up this video. Um, if you want to check out our blog, you can at NintendoFunClubPodcast.com. Uh, you can subscribe to our videos on YouTube. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or any um, any podcast app. Uh, as for myself, you can find me on Twitter at Braunjorf, B-R-A-W-N-D-W-A-R-F. So, thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.